All right, I got another tutorial for you guys. You might remember when I did that previous tutorial showing you how to make animations in Adobe Premiere. Well, this time I'm gonna show you how to make some drawings in Paint Tool Sci. So you can take this information and make your own artwork with it or make your own assets for animation with it. Uh, regardless, let's get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy and thank you for watching. All right, so this video is gonna be broken up into four parts. This first part, I'm going to show you how to use Paint Tool Sci and all the things that's capable of. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to sketch some figures. And in the third part, I'm going to show you how to make a color test, a uh, color palette. And the fourth one, I'm going to put it all together into a final picture. So to start, you go to File, New, and you know, there's some diameters here for how big the canvas is. Don't worry about that right now. Just press OK and make yourself a new file. Now if you want to change your file, the file size, you can go here and play around with that, but that's not that important. Uh, you know, change the resolution and all that. But if you want to do it very simply, you just get the select tool that I have over here, this little square. You select an area that's as big as you want your canvas to be. Obviously this only works for making it smaller. Go to canvas crop by selection and then that should make it nice and small uh, the right you know size you want so we're just gonna make a little square because we're gonna be drawing a hamburger um, and, and by doing so it'll show you everything that you need to know so I just have here the um, marker tool there's a bunch of tools here you can use but this is the one that I like to use for sketching it's nice and light it's not particularly uh, heavy if you see here it's got this sort of fuzzy thing to it it's not like pure black it's like sketching with a pencil so we're gonna get rid of that and we're just gonna start sketching here nothing much to it now I chose a hamburger because it's pretty it's like an easy thing to draw, but it's also got a lot of little details to it. It's different than if I were showing you how to draw a donut or a, a eight ball or a, you know anything like that. It's a pretty simple object, but it's also it's relatively good for this sort of thing. Apologies if I sound a little under the weather. Um, with everything going on right now, I got a little bit of allergies. Um, you know it's spring and also there's this situation happening in the world at the moment so you know everybody's cooped up and it's playing around with that it's messing with people there's this little window in the top left here if you click this square you can adjust your view all right now you may have noticed that the burger is a little lopsided now the best way to deal with that is to just select the burger and then play around with the free deform tool here that little one if you pick the corners of the selection then you can warp it and make it look you know just like how you would just like how you'd want it to look and it's a pretty easy way to make things a little more symmetrical if they look a little weird um, if you want to make sure that's nice and symmetrical then you can click down here flip horizontally and get an idea of how it looks you know from all angles so on the left here this isn't quite uh, as wide as I want it to be so I'm gonna play around with it a little bit alright that looks good though we're gonna scale select and then scale to make it bigger but the thing is that when you normally select you can see here it's not keeping the exact same dimensions but if you hold down shift and then click one of the click one of the uh, corners it will make sure that it remains the same. Uh, it's not going to get shorter or taller. It'll be the exact same dimensions. All right. So we got our burger here, but we need a new layer to do the line art on. But if it's going to be a new layer, then we might as well make the burger a different color. So I got this orange here. I'm going to click here, preserve opacity. So now only the stuff on that layer that we've drawn can be colored in. So that white isn't getting colored in, but just the sketch that we did is. All right, so now it's a different color. It'll stand out from the uh, line art we're gonna do. I got an ink pen tool here. 
you may or may not have this tool, I'm not 100% sure, but it's, you know, it's just your standard drawing tool. It's got a nice little uh, sharpness to it to the end, where it's not like all round, but whatever. So we got a new layer going on here. Um, and on this new layer, we can draw things that's not going to interact with the sketch layer at all. So new layer, it's all the way up here. Uh, if you want to delete a layer, there's this little eraser icon here, clear layer. And that will delete anything that's on a layer. So we're going to, over here we have the opacity. We're going to lower the opacity of the sketch layer so that we don't, we can just barely see it. And that's perfect for sketching. Also, if you double click on a layer, you can change its name. So I'm changing these to sketch and lines. And on the lines layer, we're going to start doing our line art. Now you can see here that the lines aren't particularly smooth. So what we're going to do is go up here to stabilizer, go all the way to the bottom, and now you have your stabilizing turned all the way up. So everything will be nice and smooth. So I'm going to speed up through this a little bit. And you can see that the stabilizer makes your lines nice and smooth. It's kind of like it's lagging behind uh, where your mouse is. And it's sort of auto-correcting um, in that manner. I'm going to add a little more detail here. Do the patty. Cheese. Bottom bun. Some more detail. And because we have the um, stabilizer on, if you kind of flick it, if you kind of like cut it short when you're drawing something, you can make it kind of sharp and pointy at the end. That's really only with this tool though. If you do it with other tools, it won't work quite as well. Put some little hash marks for the patty and there we go. We got our nice burger line art. It's separate from the sketch layer, so we can just go and delete that little trash can here, delete the sketch layer, and we have just our line art. Now I selected this little tool here, this little magic wand tool, and this is what's used to select things that aren't, that you don't just drag over with that rectangle. It will actually select things that are inside of lines or outside of lines. So by doing this, you can select um, the interior of objects. So I have a new layer underneath the line art for our colors, and if I click the magic wand tool here, and I click inside or outside, either way, but, you know, yeah, like that selected the whole outside. So, you could select the inside of the object, and that works pretty well, but it's kinda not great. You can see there's like a little nooks and crannies where it can't quite fit. Um, and what you want to do, instead of doing that, is to select the outside where it's a lot more smooth. So you see that selected it all real easy. There's some little imperfections like right there. You can just select it a little more, click in there and rapid fire, or you can select the select tool, it's with your brushes and you can do it that way. And now that you have the outside all selected and it's perfectly fine, you can go up to selection and inverse. So everything that wasn't selected will be selected, and everything that was selected will now be not selected. So by doing it that way, you can get a perfect interior view, sort of, of uh, any drawing you do. So now we're going to get the bucket tool, we're going to fill that in on the layer below the line art, and there we go. We got our color base ready to go. I'm using sort of my own terminology. Uh, click preserve opacity there. And what that'll do is it'll make it so that everything on that layer, just with the, just like we did with the sketch where we turned it orange, um, it will only draw inside of that. So you can see there, that's perfect for coloring in stuff. So just keep drawing on the color layer. I'm going to speed through this again and just color it in. I'm mixing colors on the fly here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a color palette later. But for this one, I'm not being too picky. Just doing your standard burger colors. And you can see I can select inside the specific parts of the drawing with the magic wand tool, like that cheese there. And I can make it, you know, it, it fits in just right. 
and you know do a little bit of freehand but then with lettuce I can do the selection again um, and it's it's not that hard if you allow yourself to use this tool properly do the tomatoes And you may notice that I'm not using pure red, I'm using like all sorts of varying off-color colors instead of the main ones. Because that's really what's important with this. Alright, just gonna sure those up a little bit. It's all going pretty well. Wait. Alright. So, this is about done. And you may notice that we have these sesame seeds and stuff that are not colored in because they're on the line art layer but what you're gonna do is just like the drawing just like the colors on the line art layer we're going to click preserve opacity and we're gonna change the black to a different color as well so we're gonna click preserve opacity turn off that there's these little eyeballs on the layer that you can uh, play with and as you can see we can easily change the black to whatever color we want by drawing over it. So I'm going to use this tool, the airbrush tool. It's nice and soft, just like the marker tool, but it won't smudge things around like the marker tool does. So we're just going to softly color on top of the black. And where it's going to be brighter, like near the top, uh, we're going to add more of that sort of light reddish brown color. gonna add some detail around where it would be you know lighter like these little details that aren't really lines they're just the implication of lines turn on the colors and you see there it looks a lot better now we're gonna do the sesame seeds they're like a white color not pure white though we want to not be pure white whoop there we go and that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good burger. But we're not done yet. The next thing we're going to have to do is the shading. Now the shading is like the shadows of the color. So we're going to make a new layer. And this is just to show you what I'm talking about. Let me get some black here. Now on a burger there would be, there would be shading underneath the toppings, near the bottom. And if you use black you can see it doesn't quite look right. So what I like to do is use colors. And for the sake of what we're doing here, um, I'm going to use blue. So I'm going to click the colors and then flip horizontally. And by doing that, I select only the burger. So it's like I've made another one of those um, areas that's only drawn, that you can only draw inside that area. So just, you know, you see there, you make a selection. You see how, it, there it is, and then you flip it, and it's only inside the part that has been drawn on. So we got a new layer. I'm gonna get blue because it's gonna stand out the most from the burger and blue also works for shading pretty well. I'm just gonna put a little on the outside to start. Just a little bit of blue on the outside. That looks good. And we're gonna get this blur tool which is a nice soft tool and you just kind of rub it on there and it blurs it so it's nice and soft looking. Alright, so that's around the edges. So it's sort of like it's being lit from the front. Then we're gonna get the ink brush tool again, the ink pen, and we're gonna turn the stabilizer on again and we're just gonna shade underneath everything that we think would have a shadow. So underneath the lettuce, just gonna speed through this again underneath there and you see how I'm kinda like I'm only going underneath it have some under there under the patty of course and uh, that's about it I don't want to add too much so now I'm playing with the opacity there you see how it's black if I turn it black it doesn't look right but blue looks a lot better but still looks a little too weird but if we go over here to mode where it says normal, if we pull down that menu and go to shade, click shade, it looks a lot better. 
so it will actually darken everything on top of it uh, being blue. So it'll be blue, but it'll also darken everything underneath it. And if we turn to luminosity, that'll make things brighter. Uh, Lumen shade will make it more vibrant. Binary color does something. <laughs> Uh, all sorts of different options there. It's hard to explain, you kind of just have to play around with it and figure out what each one does. But shade is good for, you know, shading. So we're going to set it to about 49, 50, 50% 50 shade. And we're going to make a new layer, and now we're going to do the final part. We're going to do the lighting, the highlights, the shiny parts on the burger. So real quick, with the airbrush tool, I'm just going to add some little highlights here on the bun, on the tomato, undo that real quick. A little bit on the onion and some on the lettuce. And that makes it look a lot more real. And of course, you know, it's good for food, but it's also good for people. It's perfect for hair. If you're not going to make anything shaded on your picture, you should still put a little bit on the hair because it really makes that pop. Put a little bit on the patty. A little more on top. And that's about it. You can play around with it a little bit. I don't want it to be just white. I'm going to make it blue. And then I'll show you how to play around with the hue um, in the selection. Is it selection? No, it's filter. On the filter tab up there. Click filter. Put it on normal, we'll move, remove everything except that. Go to the filter hue up here. If you slide it back and forth, it'll change it, the color along the uh, colors of the rainbow. So I'm gonna put on luminosity. I'm gonna put it pretty low and let's see which one of these works best. I like that the most. It's like a pink, it's like a little bit of a pink light. I would put it on normal, yeah, it's pink. So luminosity, that pink color, that looks perfect for my burger. So next, I'm gonna, there's this little button next to the colors here. If I click the airbrush and that little tiny thing there, that turns whatever brush you're using into an eraser. So that's gonna give me a really soft eraser that I'm gonna use on this. Oh, I gotta turn the preserve opacity off. If you erase stuff that has preserve opacity turned on, it'll just turn it white. All right, so just erasing that little bit, that, that makes it look a lot better. So now, now that everything's done, we're gonna start to flatten the image. Cause you can't really save it if it's all, I mean, you can save the file, but you can't export it um, transparent if things aren't flattened on top of each other. So I'm gonna put the shading, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be on top or on bottom, but as you can see, if you play around with where the certain layers are, they give you different effects. So there's the burger, it's done. Now, when it comes to exporting the image, there are two different ways to do that. You can, obviously you want to save the file when you're playing it, playing with it, but if you go to PNG, I use PNG because you can save things in a way that make them transparent. So we haven't done anything with the white in this picture. The white doesn't exist. So we're gonna save this as a PNG and there's two options here and we want to use the second one. The first one will make the white white. The second one will be transparent where the white isn't anything. Obviously if we drew something that was white it would be there but the actual white that the background is will not show up. So if I open this up here in a new thing, and I get some black, and I put it underneath it, you can see that the burger exists, but the white doesn't. It's nice and transparent. So, in my opinion, you should export things as PNGs, and if you want a transparent area of the picture, use that second option, and it'll be good. Uh, it doesn't work on every site, but it should work on most. Now we're going to move on to actually drawing a person. Now when you're drawing a person, you can obviously pull up all sorts of references that you want. 
I like using references on occasion, but if I'm just doing a little sketch, I don't really bother with them unless I'm doing a specific pose that's tough. So when I do it, I do it this way. I got the marker tool like usual, and what I like to do is start with the head. You just draw a circle, very simple. Some people start with a line of action. I do that for some poses, but if I'm just doing something real quick, I usually start with the head. Got a little cross in the middle there so that you know which way the head is oriented. Now we have a line of action that sort of represents the spine. From there, do the neck, add some more details to the face. Do a new cross, there we go. And then we do the torso, sort of like the chest area. Two big old bazongas, a uh, little place for the shirt, because she, I'm going to draw a character of mine. You might have noticed her in my thumbnail on Twitter. Her name's Basil. She's like a pizza food girl. Um, so I'm drawing her. So do a little bit of the stomach, do the legs, and you see how I have that line there for the legs? That like big straight line? You should, you should definitely do something like that with the legs. Other parts like the arms, it's not as necessary, but it's definitely necessary for the legs. So I'm noticing right away that she's getting a little too big for the canvas. Do the legs. The legs are not just straight tubes, they have like this little crook at the back. Um, you should definitely look up tutorials, not tutorials, but like um, references if you're, you're just starting to learn how to draw people. Because so, there's little things like that you, you wouldn't think that it makes a huge difference, but it does. All right, her torso is a little big. Her legs are a little too long. Gonna shrink her legs a little bit. Gonna make her torso a little taller. Uh, gonna nerf her butt a little bit. We're adding details for the seams of her pants. And now we're getting into the arms. For this one, the arms aren't that important, so I'm just having them by her side. Adding a little ruffle for the jacket, little studs, uh, the collar little flaps of the jacket. There go her hands. Just a circle for an ear. And then we get into the hair. You really want like big confident lines when you're sketching. It's really, you really should be making like, I, I see some people sketch with these really short lines that are kind of hard. They don't look very good. So I, I would recommend just going for longer confident lines so that looks pretty good the legs a little weird I'm gonna warp her leg a little bit free to form her leg same with the head the heads a little too big there we go so there's one gonna play around a little bit just add some final details there's one but she's just kind of normal what changes if you're drawing a character that's really big so same thing to start, just a head. I'm gonna make this one a little more uh, cartoony, simple. I'm not gonna put too much effort into it. But it starts off pretty much the same. I forgot her freckles, let me put the freckles on. There we go, okay. Big chubby cheeks. If you're gonna make a character really big, don't forget to make things like their face and their hands a little bigger. Uh, I'll get into the hands a little more later, but you definitely should give them some chubby cheeks. Next we go into the torso, same thing, sort of a box with the torso, but for the chest, you don't want to make it too round, it should be kind of like, I, I hesitate to use the word saggy, but it should be kind of like doughy and soft. Same with the stomach, it's not just a circle, it's like a doughy mass. Got that line in the middle that represents sort of her, like a fold, like her belly button. Arms are a little tricky. Um, I'm just gonna put them by her side for now. Little wrinkles in the clothing, and then we get into the legs. Crotch and then legs, and this, uh, undo that. You gotta make her butt a little more defined. All right, there we go. Um, I'm recording the audio for this after I've already done the drawing, by the way, so apologies if things don't sync up that well. All right, little bit of knees. I just do little tri uh, diamonds to represent the knees. At least for sketches, it works well. So you can see the, the sort of idea. You're drawing the character, but you're making them bigger. Let me show that a little better. All right, you got the circle, got the spine, got the parts of the body. Undo that, that's not right, there we go. 
and you're just kind of drawing a normal person and then adding a bunch of stuff to them. So ears, and then we put in an arm, and then same idea, you get the chest and you make it really big. You're not making it like a circle, you're making it kind of soft and squishy. There we go. But you can see that with the arms and the legs, um, the hands and feet are not any bigger, not much bigger anyway. Let me draw a hand here. So this is like a normal hand, and you could draw like a big puffy hand, and that's good, but don't go overboard with the hands and the feet, otherwise you're going to end up, um, they're not going to look right, because usually your hands and feet don't get that much bigger. Same with a lot of parts of your face. Hands, feet, and face are pretty much the normal. Now, maybe you want a more dynamic pose. Then you definitely want to start here with this line of action I just did. This, like, S in the middle. Then you can build up from there. I'm just going to do a bunch of these little doodles real quick. Because you can definitely make dynamic poses. But if you're going to do that, you want to start with a firm uh, line of action. So you start, instead of the head, you start with, like, the torso. And then you do the head and the limbs kind of last. There we go, she's kind of running. Move that over there, let's do another one. Let's have her upside down. Do the torso, do the butt. Uh, no, there's the butt. Two legs, ankles, arm, another arm. And you can see how very quickly you can make something that you can build off of if you do it that way. Let's do one more. Um, let's just have her laying down. So you got her arms kind of under her chin, chest, butt, leg, and it's very easy to make a dynamic pose if you start with the line of action instead of the head. But if you're just doing something standard, a character is just standing around or sitting around, you can start with the head. Um, but you really should start with the line of action. It depends on what you're doing though. Alright, and uh, hopefully you can see that uh, it's not particularly hard to draw characters big and make them pose well. It just requires some practice. Now making a good color palette for your drawing isn't particularly hard, but a lot of people do tend to outsource it to other, you know, places online. Like I'm sure you've seen these on Tumblr or DeviantArt or wherever, and they're pretty good but they can be a little limiting. Um, if I pull one up here you can see there's only five colors. Uh, they don't have every color, and, you know, you might see these and find one or two colors that you really like, but you don't like the whole thing, and it's kind of hard to tell what the colors are supposed to represent. Like, is that a tree color? Is that sky color? Um, what I like to do is I like to find photos or drawings that I enjoy, like this one here, let me open this up, and I like to make a color palette out of it. So you have the photo up here. And then you have the colors down here selected from that photo. Uh, and you can do this for TV shows, uh, GIFs, other people's artwork, uh, and you can get a lot of variety out of it. So all you gotta do, obviously, is find uh, some sort of drawing. So you can do that on Google Images, you can just find something in your feed that you like. Um, I searched it up, I searched Google Images and I found this one that I like. It's just a nice leaf, it's got pretty much every color aside from like a light blue. So I'm going to copy the image, I'm going to go into Psy, I'm going to go to File, Create from Clipboard. So that will put the image right in there, and there's no need to crop or anything. Uh, the dimensions of the image will be the dimensions of the file. Now, you need some space to put the colors, so what I like to do is just go to Change Size. There's this little box here, you want to move it up, so that whatever you add will appear underneath it. And we're gonna add a couple, like 150, 200 extra pixels. So now you got this nice space underneath. We're gonna make a new layer, put it underneath the image, and we're gonna go in here with the color select tool right here. And we're gonna select a color to act as our white. So we have this nice little lime green kind of color. Uh, then we're gonna find something for black. So we have this nice dark blue, navy blue kind of color make that half of it and then we're going to start adding blocks of color now if you want to make a straight line in Psy 
If you mark a position and then hold down shift and click somewhere else, you'll make a straight line. So I'm going to do that to make all of my colors here. Just put in some, you know, areas of color, some green, some gray, just selecting anything in the image that looks good. So you got some green, some yellow, got some orange, some red, and we got our black. I'm going to move it to the left a little bit so there's enough room for the black. And there you go. Real simple. And you can do this with any image. Here's another one put together real, real quick. I'm speeding through this again. It's sped up a little bit, but you get the idea. You select something light, put that in, and you don't need to go from light to dark. You can just uh, do it however, but I find that that works very well. So you got some teal, got some blue, make some space for one more color, and I hope you can see how this can be used to make all sorts of interesting color palettes. And if there's a color here that you don't have, like yellow, you can just select one of the colors and uh, move the color wheel at the top left around to make a different color. So if I move this over to yellow, got a nice, like, interesting yellow color. So by doing this, you can get all the interesting colors that your heart could desire. All right, you know how to put everything together. You have all the stuff that you need to make an image. So let me show you how I make an image, like a finished drawing. So I got two layers here, the one that the sketch is going to be on, and one with my references. I have my color references here, I have a previous drawing of the character, I have some of the sketches we did, and I have a picture here for the pose that I want to do. So let's just go to the sketch layer, mark a tool, zoom in, and we're going to start with the head. I'm going to speed up through this a little bit because you know how to sketch stuff. I'm assuming if you're watching these videos you do know how to draw. So I'm more so just showing you all the little intricacies of the program. Um, if you want more information about the specific program, then I would suggest looking up a tutorial for a specific part of it. This is kind of just an overview. All right. Um, and, and of course, it's, you know, it implies, it features my artwork and the kind of stuff that I draw. So if you're interested in that, I hope that you found this interesting. Um, so we're gonna quickly do her hair. I'm putting a little more effort into this one than the previous sketches because obviously it's gonna be a final picture. It's gonna be a finished thing that I'm gonna... Um, I think I've put like a couple hours into this one. Maybe an hour and a half? But anyway, we're gonna do the glasses. Gonna put it all together real quick. So I like to start with the head because I feel like that's the easiest part to mess up and it's important to get it done first so that you you have sort of like a direction for the rest of the picture. Because if you have an expression and you have the head, then you have an idea of what the rest of the body should be doing. Like, a person's face can tell you a lot about their body language. So once you have that done, I like to move on to the rest of the body. So I'm putting in the details of her jacket. Um, and this pose, I've never done a pose quite like this before, where like they're tugging at their clothes. So this one was a little tricky for me. I, you can see I erase a lot of stuff and then do it over again. Um, but because it's a sketch, that's completely okay. Don't worry about making your sketches look like professional and like cleaning them up too much. Um, especially if you're going to then go and do the line art, because then you'll just clean it all up later when you're doing that. So like her hand here is way too close to her body, but I didn't recognize that right away, but I do a little later. So we got her stomach here, gonna make it kind of big. Not too long though, because she's not a particularly tall character. So I'm doing the rest of her body kind of first to get an idea of how big her stomach should be. So that looks about right. And then around this time I noticed that her chest wasn't nearly big enough. So I went and kind of rotated her body a little bit, and then I went and grabbed the arm here, moved it to the right so I can add some more of her chest. So don't be afraid to do that. It looks kind of sloppy in the sketch, but you don't notice it when you actually do the final line art. Add in the details of her jacket. I shade the inside of the jacket here a little bit so that I remember to to shade that when I do the colors. 
Now we're gonna move on to her legs. And I draw another line of action for her legs. Or I guess, I mean I did, but then I got rid of it, but whatever. So, trying to keep her legs from being too long. I feel like that's always an easy thing to do. Then we move on to the shoes. And for this one, I figured that it would be nice to show you how to do a drawing with only drawing one of the legs. So her other leg isn't actually visible, really. You see what I mean? It's kind of like tucked behind her other leg. Like there it is. And you see a little bit of it, but it also kind of like dips into a silhouette at the end so you don't see much of the color. And you'll see that more when I get to the final uh, drawing. I'm gonna free deform it a little bit, make it look a little better. Play with her scale a little bit. Because I want her... it ended up being a lot more thin of a drawing than I thought it would be. It's not as wide as I would have liked. Not to say that she's not big enough, I just mean like... Um, it's a lot more vertical because of the way her legs are positioned. Gonna add some more detail to her butt. Add some more there. It's nice to have a mixture of round shapes and sharp shapes. I feel like that's always a nice detail. And real quick, I'm just like filling in the line art so that there's a little bit of a difference. Because um, this is usually what my sketches look like when I'm done with the sketches, but this is obviously becoming a full thing. So it's nice to fill in the line art so there's a little bit of a gradient there. I'm gonna turn the whole thing blue and then lower the opacity so that I can start on the line art. There's not a whole lot to say at this point, so it's going really quick. I'm, I have this sped up like 400% or whatever. But when you're doing something like this, it's a good idea to think about where you want your lines to be thick and where you want them to be thin. Um, anything that's dark and like in shadow should probably have a thicker outline than like the top of the head where things are kind of more wispy and bright. Another thing, uh, I'll get to that later, but when I'm doing line art, sometimes I'll have a separate layer for different line art. So like, her glasses here and the, uh, the seams of her clothes are on a different layer. I haven't started on those yet, but I do that so that it's easier to correct any mistakes and to color them differently when I go to color the lines in because the seams on the clothes usually aren't going to be the same intensity as uh, an outline. Don't be afraid to erase lines too, like that right there. Instead of drawing what you see, uh, you can just draw a rectangle and then delete uh, where something pokes through it. And I think that works a lot better than trying to just draw it in like one motion. So like her chest there, I'm gonna have to delete the part where the hand is, but that's okay. Uh, because if I did the art way where I drew the hand first and then I drew the chest, it wouldn't look, it, it just wouldn't look as good. It would be like, it would you would be able to tell that it was broken up. Now we're moving on to her legs. And it's a good idea to not go overboard with detail, um, but I like a little bit of like folding and uh, s creases. Uh, when it comes to like jeans or whatever. I'm gonna add a pocket. Going on to the knees. I like keeping the knees pretty simple too. And you might have noticed that some places I'm adding these like pockets of shadow, like right here at her on her shoes. I'm gonna add this big pocket here. So even though there's no shading on this layer, it's nice to put a little bit there if it's something that you know for certain is gonna be like almost like you're not even going to be able to see it. It can break up the image really nice. Like under her neck there, you can see the same thing. Same with that little bit under her thumb, or uh, under her pinky rather. Add the other part of the jacket. And I think there's a little bit here as well. Maybe not. Yeah, there. Just a little bit. It, it helps it helps and um, with some um, with some artists like especially comic book artists they use a lot of that you, they use a lot of those like big black blotches of shadow 
And so here you can see I'm adding the additional details on a secondary layer. And I'm putting them in blue so you can see uh, how they work. Creases on the pants, all that stuff. Gonna put in some for her laces on her shoes. One thing about this character that I haven't decided on yet is what her shoes are supposed to be. Sometimes I draw her with shorts, sometimes I draw her with boots, sometimes I draw her with a different shirt design. Her shirt design is never consistent. Um, and don't be afraid to change the way your characters look as you're playing around with them. There's a character I had named, uh, well I still have her obviously, named Ambrosia, who's like a cat, and she used to have like all these details, all these like stripes and stuff on her, but I got rid of them because they didn't add much and they were just such a hassle to draw every time. So don't be afraid to simplify your characters a bit. Um, and Basil here needs a little more simplifying because I'm not sure... Uh, she's not done yet. Alright, so we've selected and then inverse selected uh, the area around her. And now we're going to move on to coloring. So I gotta play around with the color for her hair a little bit here because I don't quite have the right shade. So I go sort of in between uh, both of them. Nice dark gray for the pants. White for the shirt. There's not much to talk about, but you might notice that I'm not coloring in the lines yet. Because right now I'm just playing around to see what colors work and what don't. You don't want to just immediately go into trying to uh, get the colors exactly right. Um, unless it's something like a comic where you know like you're using the same color every panel. But usually you're going to want to play around and see what colors work before you decide on what colors to use. And when you're doing that you don't need to do it perfectly. But here we're moving on to actually coloring inside the lines, selecting the areas inside the lines, going to the layer below it to add the color. You gotta be careful to do all of this on the correct layer. Doing in the sort of ankle, ankle, the elbow parts, the sort of rolled up jacket. Nice orange lenses, white for the eyes. Even though the details, like the glasses and the uh, seams on her clothing are on a different layer. The coloring is all on the same layer. But you can do that differently, of course. I'm gonna go with the rest of her shirt. And her shirt's looking a little barren, so I'm gonna add a uh, logo to her shirt in a bit. And like I said, I, I can never decide on which one to sort of keep permanently. And you can see here I'm gonna make the shoes kind of a uh, silhouette so they kind of fade her pants kind of fade directly into the shoes so there's no orange on the soles of her shoes either because it's just a silhouette and that'll look better when I get the shading done so yeah I'm trying to figure out what works for a shirt and I eventually decide to just put some text on it so there's this really nice site called a hundred no a thousand and one fonts which you can use for all sorts of stuff so what I'm gonna do here is make a quick little mask this like teal um, part where a shirt is I think so yeah I'm like looking up an old picture but I'm not gonna put that on our shirt so I'm gonna get some teal here I'm going to go to that site, I'm going to type in Florida Grown for the text, I'm going to look up a nice font to put on her shirt. Um, that one looks good. So I'm going to put it in, grab it, sort of format it like a shirt, and sort of warp it onto where her, on her chest, on her stomach, where it would be. And then with that teal selection, I'm going to flip it back and forth twice, grab it, cut it, delete it and then go to luminance and transparency which turns all the white in a selection transparent so all that's left is the black which I then color in and put it on her shirt color in her freckles 
and now we're gonna start coloring in the line art. So I got this green that I'm using to kind of soften up the black in her hair, uh, the line art for her hair rather. Same thing with the detail layer, uh, making her glasses gray, uh, graying out the uh, seams in her clothing, putting like a darker, like like just softening it. Because using using pure black for line art usually doesn't work that well. And with this one, it's like a very dark blue. Like a really, really dark navy blue, but it's still a little too dark. So you'll be able to see it in a little bit around her face. And uh, you can see it here with her pants a little bit. They're like getting nice and softened around the edges. But it's very obvious with her uh, face and hands. We go over here, and yep, see how that looks? It makes it look a lot softer. Some people, they like will meticulously color each line to be like an appropriate color. I like just using the uh, airbrush tool and kind of making it softer. And now with that done, we're gonna go into the shading. So I'm gonna just start drawing in the splotches where there would be shadows. So there's some under her hair. Fill that in. And this is all on a new layer, mind you, of course. Uh, put some in her ear, some under her neck, and yeah, this is just like with the burger, just filling it in. The parts, I'm not worrying about coloring inside the lines when it comes to parts that are like outside the main figure, because we're just going to select the base, flip it back and forth horizontally, and then cut the interior of the shading. Out. So all that stuff that's spilling out on the uh, edges, we're just going to delete that. Don't worry about that. Put it under her shirt, under her jacket rather. And now we have the airbrush tool selected so that's a, a, um, an eraser. And we're just removing some parts to give it a little more of a dynamic look. So like, where it's darker, we're going to remove less. Where it should be less, we're going to remove more. So that works pretty well. We're going to select the rest of her now that we need to shade. So like her leg here, and uh, some parts of her hair, but we'll do that later. And instead of erasing, we're going to add with the airbrush. So that part where it's sort of in silhouette, we're going to make that pretty dark. Same with the inside of her jacket. Uh, remove a little more. I'm gonna add some to her hair here real quick with the airbrush. See how that looks? Some more to her hair right here. That looks pretty good. There we go. And even though it's not shaded yet, I'm sure you can see how this works for the shadows. And even like leaving it like this, you don't even need to make it darker, but just doing stuff like this makes it look a lot better. I want her thighs to be a lot more three-dimensional, so I'm going to add a good amount here, like a nice little soft area where there's like this crease. And we're going to get the blur tool, soften that up, and that looks pretty good. Uh, let's combine, let's sort of like merge all of that together with the blur tool, and that looks good. A little more on her arm, uh, let's put a little bit on her foot, that's good. I think that's about it. So we're going to cut that out, paste it, and there we have only it in the inside. We're going to put that underneath the line art and we're going to turn it on shade and let's see what colors work. I'm not feeling this blue. It's a little too stark. Um, I'm going to grab the hue and uh, play with it a bit. I think I like it pink, like pink or red. Yeah, that looks good. Gonna make it a nice pink color, and we're gonna soften that a little bit. And then we're gonna move on to the lighting, the highlighting. So, you see with the hair, it makes the hair look so much better. So we're going to soften that a little bit and we're going to start highlighting the rest of the clothing. What I'm doing is I'm doing it with the 
I think the marker tool, yeah. And then I'm using the blur tool to kind of soften some of the parts of it. And uh, as well as using the airbrush eraser to kind of remove some bits. So that looks pretty good. And we're just gonna go and do that for pretty much all of her body that matters. Put some on her chest, a little bit on her cheek. You don't want to go crazy with the face because I feel like it gets really distracting. And then you want to put some on her legs. That looks pretty good. I like blurring like horizontally because that gives it a nice texture without it becoming just completely like blurred away. Put a little more highlights on the seams of her clothing. Erase the edges a little bit. Um, I think her stomach needs some. There we go. Some on her hands. If there's like a flat facet like her fingers there, where they're sort of on a different area than the rest than the back of her hand, which is really flat, it's nice to add some uh, some detail there to make it look more blocky. Put a little bit on her shirt. And we're just going to finish up this real quick. Now there's something really interesting that sort of puts all this together. It kind of puts in a nice little bow. And it's adding a nice gradient on top of the whole thing. So we're going to make a quick gradient. I'm going to make, um, after I play around with the hue of this a little bit, I'm going to select a nice thin, tall... Uh, selected area once I flatten all this stuff together just put it all together there we go um, and I think I'm gonna copy these and kind of like put them offset underneath a little bit to make a thicker line all right so I'm gonna make that selection and then the top of it I'm gonna get the airbrush tool I'm gonna make a soft area of light yellow and an area underneath of dark blue so you'll see that this kind of makes it so that the top is brighter, the bottom is darker. So if you select, flip horizontally, and cut, and then turn on luminous and lumen shade, rather, you can see that it makes the top, it just makes it look better. And if I turn it on and off, you can see how it makes it look more three-dimensional. So what you want to do is you can play around with the hue a bit, but turning that on really low, on like 4%, 10%, and then flattening it to the image, merging down with that little button there. It really makes it look better. Don't forget the eyes. You gotta, sh you know, add a little highlight to the eyes. And there's one last little thing that really adds a lot of character to a drawing. It's a really simple thing. Um, I'm gonna just play with the contrast and stuff here for a second. But it's about, I'm gonna tell you about uh, noise filters. Now on Psy, I don't think they have a noise filter. On Photoshop they do, but what I do is I just have an image of noise. And what noise is, it's, a, it's this sort of like TV static stuff that you can put on top of an image and it will break up um, sort of like the perfect areas. So if I put in noise here, I pull it up, it'll open up in paint and I'll just copy paste it into Psy. You can see that it's like, it's like TV static, but if I put it over here and I do the flip horizontally and cut uh, trick with basil, and I turn on lumen shade again, you can see it, it, if I turn it really low to like 3%, it like adds this nice grainy texture to the image, kind of like you're looking at paper, like printed paper, and it really helps. And if the grain's a little too extreme for you, even at like 2%, you can turn down the contrast there and just get it to look just right. You Like 2%, 1% to 2% is usually enough. And then you'll have your finished image. Now, obviously you can save this transparent, that's what I like to do. But for Twitter, that white background can be a little boring. So what I like to do is copy the image, make it bigger, put it in the background, put it beneath uh, the main picture, turn up the brightness and contrast, and then turn it way down so you can barely see it. And then on the image up top, I select 
do the horizontal flip and then go to selection and I do increase a bunch of times and then I cut from the back and it makes this nice white border around the image. So then I just save that as a non-transparent image and I post it to Twitter and it looks good. All right, so I hope that that tutorial helped you. If you have any additional questions, maybe reach out to me on Twitter. Um, I hope that some of you at least will see this and try and get into art and stuff. If not, that's perfectly fine. I hope that you enjoyed the artwork regardless. I have some more speed paints and stuff that you can look at if you want to draw along or try and figure out how they work uh, on my main channel and my secondary channel. So I hope you guys check that out. And thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely day.